Good morning and good afternoon. Thank you guys so much for joining today's session on innovation through the consumer closeness and the future of CX. My name is Kara Biscalia, and I'm the Chief Innovation and Insights Officer at TalkLooker, and I've actually been with the company for over five and a half years now. And I've been so lucky to get to work with some of our largest customers to help them understand their consumers, to drive impact across their entire organization with easy to use solutions. We have a jam-packed agenda for today that I'm really excited to talk to you about the value of listening to your consumers in this ever-changing landscape and how we innovate to help our customers get closer to their consumers. So let's dive in. We can all agree that these last couple of years in the pandemic have been intense, emotional, and transformative transformative from that perspective. Consumers' demands keep fluctuating, and it becomes impossible to, as a brand to stay up to speed on this ever-changing landscape. And so it's super critical to listen to consumers, understand what they're talking about, what they care about, what motivates them in these larger behavioral contexts. And so if we look at these last couple of years, we can see this new age of a consumer that's really shaping brands of tomorrow. For example, around the supporting the digital evolution, everything in this last couple of years has been all focused around digital, digital, more and more consumers are consuming more digital content. There's new emerging platforms like TikTok that are out there that are forcing brands to listen to all these different multiple di different digital touch points. Additionally, um, brands have been forced to think how they can engage with their consumers, whether that's creating apps or making it easier to get um, you know, delivery services through apps. Um, so there's just this heightened more focus on digital content throughout this digital, digital evolution. Additionally, we have to all admit that consumers are really health and wellness focused. And that doesn't just mean physically anymore. What we really saw, especially of these last couple of years, is a new focus around mental health and how important it is that consumers are really prioritizing mental health, um, you know, and physical health. So feeding the mind and body to move forward into the future. Additionally, there is not even an emphasis on the importance of sustainability. Uh, consumers are choosing products that have values and purpose that um, really are critical in their choices when they're thinking about things like sustainability. It's no longer optional. You need to think about packaging, production, and more. Additionally, consumers are craving value and convenience. And they're also desiring to work together for a greater purpose and showing empathy. So how do you guys keep up with all these different consumer conversations that are happening across all these different channels? It really creates impossible for uh, impossible uh, challenges for brands to manage, like data is stuck in silos or there's not enough access. There's not enough skills on teams to uncover these in insights. And it becomes really hard to manage this data. And there's a lot of manual tasks that are still being done um, across this entire landscape. And so these challenges actually lead to gaps between brands and consumers. And I think a perfect example of this is actually sustainability. If we look at the industry of CPG, in fact, if you only look at if these at these data points that you'll hear, 30 only only 33% of the conversations around sustainability are aligned between consumers and brands. Brands need to stop wasting that time messaging. They need to listen to their consumers, speak with them and not at them. And so this brings me to my next point of how the industry is continuously evolving, right? As these different channel, uh, all these different consumer behaviors become impossible, these different data silos that are happening, we have to be in tune as brands to identify the signals and the noise. And traditionally, we've been looking at social listening in order to do that, to understand these consumer behaviors. And that means more traditional channels like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, but it's so much more than that. It's about listening to more conversations that are happening across your brand, across different touch points, such as 
reviews, emails, and unifying that conversation to understand what's happening across these different channels, leveraging AI to make sense of it, to segment the data so you can action it across your organization. And that's the value of consumer intelligence is that comb that combination of combining internal and external data together. And when you combine that internal and external data, that's where we're focusing on our innovation strategy. That becomes imperative. And you can feed that single consumer and customer feedback stream to all your different departments across their organization. Whether that be um, an area where you can find that next new flavor for your product and R&D team, or those new package ideas that are really focused on sustainability, or how do you create those more personalized um, uh, personalized marketing strategies from that perspective? How do you effectively communicate your, your marketing and PR to you so you can make sure that you're, you're getting the most impact by targeting the right audiences? Additionally, it can lead to driving sales and e-commerce, but more significantly by being in tuned with those different conversations that are happening on social um, and your customer care channels and reviews all those different engagement channels that your consumer across that customer journey, you can actually enhance and improve customer satisfaction, reduce care costs, and drive um, automation and helping you get closer to the consumers, which will drive growth across your organization. So TalkWalker is actually a consumer intelligence company. We were actually founded over 12 years ago. We started out as web crab web crawling technology using the latest advancements in machine learning, and then developed partnerships with over 20 social networks. And now we're innovating in a new way to even combine social data with those internal data points like CRM and care. And that's really fueling our innovation strategy because that's what our customers are asking of us. And we're combining that together to make sense of it to inform and shape strategies. And we have 11 offices globally and a whole team of experts. And on top of that, we're actually leaders in the Forrester wave around AI consumer and, um, uh, AI and consumer intelligence platforms. So we're very proud of that to be that market leader. So just taking a turn uh, to really focus on that innovation. So I think as, I, as um, one of the biggest things that I love to do here at TalkWalker is engage with our customers. And I pride ourselves and we pride ourselves on listening, learning and innovating with them to solve the most complex problems across their entire organization. And we actually help our customers get closer to their consumer, transforming data into real-time human and cultural insights to drive action and brand growth across their organization. And we innovate based on these five pillars that you see here. And we're gonna walk through some examples of how we do it. And that includes a deeper understanding, understanding what's happening across your category, across your competitive space thinking about smarter innovation by understanding those consumer behavior trends, what's happening in your community, those touch points that are engaged with your brands, and how do you feel that to your product and R&D team? How do you create those more impactful campaigns? Again, understanding who your audiences are, who are those creators that can help you drive growth across your organization. In this complex landscape, it's important to drive um, stronger brands by protecting and building your reputation. And then finally, enhancing those customer experiences. And I'm really going to dive into really that deeper use cases there. So one of the first ones we're going to look at is stronger brands. And what we do here to help our customers get closer to their consumers from an innovation standpoint is we've created this brand love benchmarking for stronger brands. So essentially, there's so many different conversations happening across these different touch points, and it becomes really hard to understand and measure brand love. So we've created these proprietary scores that look at across three, three specific pillars that include passion, how much people love or hate your brand, trust, how trusting do you feel about your brand, and also 
how much willing are you to recommend it from a customer satisfaction perspective? We actually combine all three of those scores, weight them evenly to create the brand love index that allows you to understand how you rank again across your entire industry, how you rank across your competitors. And then we put lenses on it to understand how you can move up in your rankings by looking at it is brand love being drive by looking at your workplace environment? Is it around your sustainability efforts or CSR or just campaigns and initiatives that you're leveraging? That's really critical so that you can understand how you can move, move that needle and inform and shape your strategy. Looking at impactful campaigns, where we're innovating is we're adding more data sources to, um, to make it easier for our customers to contextualize these conversations at scale. Imagine if you can leverage our capabilities, our AI, to identify consumer trends on a geographical location level. Imagine looking at healthy eating trends and how they compare um, to different areas across London, and how's that compared to other areas in Europe? And so that can fuel and shape your strategy. And actually what you find out is that people are more e eating healthier on the weekends uh, versus the weekdays. That's really critical for you to understand so that you can leverage that in your content strategy. On top of that, add layers of audiences on it. What are millennials talking about from a healthy eating perspective versus parents? Parents are thinking about things like, what are the healthy ingredients that they can fuel for their kids and provide them with healthy meals? While well, millennials are looking for things more convenient. This becomes really critical because it's about targeting the right message to the right people at the right time, and then measuring and optimizing that campaign impact. Very critical from that perspective. Another one from a camp in, uh, impactful campaigns, imagine if you could look into the future from a, uh, a content perspective. TalkWalker is so proud to have just released our predictive analytics capabilities. Um, anticipate those consumer behavior changes. Determine how much more you should invest in that content that you've just released because we've developed an algorithm and leveraged our our leadership in AI to forecast out and predict a trend and forecast of that content over a 90 day period. This is a lot harder to do by yourself for anyone who's built these data models. Imagine every piece of content, every trend you can determine, what's that, um, what's that trend gonna look like 90 days from now? And that's what you can leverage with our predictive analytics capability. Super powerful to understand consumer behavior shifts. And then we wanted to dive deeper in some of the areas that we're innovating around are these solutions that we know are, pro are problems that are commonly faced by our customers. And we listen to them. And one of the things that they're really struggling with is how do you measure these ESG topics? How are you listening to all those conversations that are happening across ESG? And then from, how is that happening from a macro perspective? then looking at those lens through your industry. And then finally, are these issues actually impacting your brand specifically? On top of that, your ESG issues are super critical to listen to because your consumers, as we talked about in the beginning here, are craving and not making it optional for brands anymore to think about sustainability priorities. You need to be able to measure that and understand what, what are the priorities for your consumers and then when you're pushing out those initiatives, are they resonating? And, and that's really important that you understand that full landscape gives you that deeper marketing understanding from that perspective. Now I'm gonna actually dive deeper into a really special use case. Um, we have this amazing product that we've just come out with called customer intelligence. And it's super critical that allows you to understand those um, and combine that internal and external data. So we're specifically looking at reviews here. Um, and this is something we have built out and we've um, really prioritized our review coverage from that sp specific capability to be able to understand how you can inform and improve your customer satisfaction and customer experience. And so one of the examples I'm gonna walk you through is actually um, a company that we work with, it's a leading CPG, and they were trying to understand different quality um, quality issues across their product sets. So for example, you know, what were they looking at? Types of food, um, types of 
different specific products. And what they found across listening to these reviews, which is very valuable, that 74% of all the reviews that were coming in were talking about expiration in a really negative way. Um, and so this was a really big signal to, to the, um, you know, the CPG that we were working with and that they were able to uncover that. And so let's take a deeper dive to look at what was the impact of that um, on their business by being able to understand that. So when they are seeing some of these issues, especially around expiration, that's a huge big deal because that really, it becomes very costly to replace all the products that are expiring on a location to location level. Um, so that really can be a huge cost for from a financial standpoint to the customer. And additionally, it also, it's very damaging that a lot of the customers that bought this product, if they're talking about, you know, um, they're dissatisfied that they got this expired product and it was stale, that really is an increase in terms of customer acquisition costs. It also damages their reputation. And then they have to further look into supply chain issues from that perspective. So in this instance, when this happens to you at your organization, how are you going to flag it in real time and notify your, your key stakeholders? With our, with our capabilities, we've been focusing on how not only can you run these analytics, uncover these issues, but data, if you can't action it anywhere, it, be, it, doesn't, um, it becomes invaluable. And so we're, we really prioritize making sure that you can immediately act on that data, share it to the appropriate stakeholders. And in this situation, it was customer service teams, quality assurance teams, and supply chain teams. Additionally, um, we're gonna continue to innovate across our customer intelligence product by analyzing continued more unstructured data from, uh, for example, from CRM and contact center. So we've actually been working with some of our customers. They've, they've really fueled our innovation strategy because we've developed integrations with companies like Salesforce, ServiceNow, et cetera, to be able to automatically ingest their customer data, compare that with social data, and to be able to help optimize um, you know, their customer experiences from that perspective. So this company was actually able to identify issues that were coming up through those. And imagine if you're seeing an issue coming through on social, what people are talking about, and then you're also seeing across your community and your care channels and surveys. If it's happening on multiple touch points, that means it's actually a higher risk from that perspective. And you might want to prioritize fixing those customer issues um, so you can really move faster um, to help put your customers at the center of everything you do by listening to them, unifying those conversations to action it across your entire organization. And so we, with all this data, it obviously can help shape, um, shape tomorrow and understand the now consumers. And we help our customers get closer. And we do that by combining these different internal and external data, leveraging our AI and NLP to help action this data across the organization. And we've helped a lot of our clients make huge impact. We've helped a leading CPG save a million dollars in market research costs by shifting their messaging from more uh, vanity purposes to hygiene, especially during COVID. We've helped a leading luxury brand target affluent millennials through a campaign and create more personalized strategies and increase their sales by 15%. We've also helped the leading technology companies really um, improve their retention by 6%, all by listening to consumer conversations and customer conversations across those multiple digital touch points during a product launch. So instantly be able to understand if something's going awry when you're launching a product so you can course correct accordingly. So I wanna leave you with some great key takeaways. If, um, you know, I hopefully you learned some really great insights throughout this day today, but it's super critical to leverage consumer data, combine this data, get that 360 degree by combining internal and external customer uh, feedback channels by internal and external data, it really gets deeper to that consumer understanding. Leverage a technology so that you can prepare yourself to understand all these signals in the noise and translate them into easy to use solutions that are easily distributed across your organization so you can democratize that data and have that cons 
uh, customer centric mindset. If you do that, you will be so effective because now more than ever, we need to put the customers at the epicenter of everything we do. And in order to do that, you need to listen to them. So thank you so much for joining today's session. It's been a pleasure to speak with you and I look forward to learning more from you guys. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. And please check us out at the rest of the conference.